everybody! Welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream! Uh, we've got some special guests here today. You can't even see all of them. Most of them are off camera. But uh, we will introduce you right here to uh, Steve Theodore. He is our technical art director. What, what, is, it, what is a technical art director? So instead of deciding uh, what's pretty and what's not pretty, I decide like what's affordable and what's not affordable in the game. Like, can we, uh, you know, can we have that many trees, or how are we going to figure out how to make the cars do this thing? That kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, so we've got some very specific questions for him about uh, the the Xbox One X version of the game. That okay, I'd like to let's let's be Oops. real here. He stands around behind people's desks and go and starts using terms that none of us understand. It's all technical, and he makes himself sound really smart. That's yeah. what you do. All well, day. he successfully makes himself sound really smart. That's why we've got him on here today. Um, I bamboozled these people, so now I can do it to all of you. That's right. But before we get to Steve, uh, there's a few like important subjects that we that we wanted to bring up, and eventually, oh, I have them set up all wrong. Hold on a second. Ah, that's gone. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, so uh, we've gotten a lot of questions since the game was announced uh, about some pretty, uh, you know, hot button topics, and one of them is microtransactions. Uh, and so we've had a lot of people asking, you know, is this game going to have microtransactions? Especially when they saw our very low price point at, at thirty dollars. They're like, oh, I know what they're planning to do. They're going to like make us buy, I don't know, currency or energy or something like that. And so uh, the company released a statement about that. And so I got to find a spot on the screen where there's nothing important, so I can put this statement up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so State of Decay will not offer or require microtransactions in the traditional manner of loot boxes, in game currency, or time gates. Uh, instead, we'll provide ongoing DLC content ranging in scale from content packs like the Independence Day pack that, that, <laughs> that's coming out soon after release, um, and all the way up to full game modes like the, uh, the, the Daybreak expansion that we've announced and told you absolutely nothing about. Um, and so that's really important to us for people to understand because, you know, we, we want them to know that, you know, we're not, we're not going to be going for any of those, like, Skinner Box style, you know, buy this again and again and again and again type, uh, type mechanics. You know, that's, that's not the way that State of Decay rolls. Now, we are going to keep ex trying to expand and support the game over time. And so the, 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 the reason we want to be very specific about this statement is because, you know, if we offer a very small content pack, its price might be very affordable and very, very little. And, uh, and we, we could imagine somebody going, hey, that's a microtransaction. But the point is, we, we want to keep expanding and updating this game over time. Uh, and that's going to mean, you know, uh, paid DLC uh, expansions and things like that. But the thing we're not going to try to do is just have you push a button again and again and again and just keep no feeding us nickels. No loot boxes. No loot boxes. No, none of that stuff. So that is our, that is our first uh, big statement of the day. Um, our second one, which is why Steve is here, uh, is this one that I had up on the screen accidentally when we started. Uh, which is, uh, uh, this is just talking about what... You, what you're going to find, uh, what visual uh, enhancements you're going to find on the Xbox One X version of the game. I mean, not version, it's the same game either way, but when you have an Xbox One X, this is what you get. Extra memory and greater processing power give us mo a more stable frame rate and lets us do more with higher resolution textures. Uh, when you're in the game, you immediately see the difference. Denser foliage, detailed shadows, depth of light from farther distances, and more detailed character models. It makes the world feel more crisp, vibrant, and like real life. And of course, it lets us run the game in 4K and HDR, which a lot of fans are excited about. Uh, and because a lot of fans are excited about it, uh, we don't just have a statement here, we've got an entire person here, uh, Steve, to, to, to expand on this a little bit, because you know, we want to be able to talk a little bit more about like what we did and why we did it. So I'll just hand that off to you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, it's actually been really interesting and really exciting, because uh, 4K does change a lot of things. Um, for the end user, it changes a lot of things in a purely positive direction, and then for us, it makes life a little more complicated. Um, a little? Yeah, well, one of the things that's really interesting about the, the One X is that like, it's literally pushing four times as many pixels as a regular HD display. And so that's a lot more work. The CPU is roughly maybe three times faster than the CPU on a, on a 360, or sorry, on an Xbox One. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot faster than a 360. Uh, Microsoft did a, a lot of work, and they did a really brilliant job of um, making sure that that didn't have didn't cause a step back. I was actually really worried when we first got our dev kits. I was afraid we were going to turn it on for the first time, and everything was going to be a lot slower. But um, they did a brilliant job of making sure that we were already at parity pretty much right out of the box. Um, but then we started looking at the profiling and 
sort of stepping through and seeing how decisions we'd made for the original Xbox um, had to be revisited in order to give people the right kind of experience on the One X. So um, like a really good example is like we had a thing for um, like brick walls, right? You, you see brick walls in games all the time. And, and personally, I have this horrible aversion to texture repeats. And so I, I'd stand there and I just see them. I can't see, I can't unsee them. So everybody else is like, oh, that's pretty. I'm like, God damn it. There's that same brick every 10 feet. <laughs> so um, we had a little procedural system that mucks around with the textures so that when you get a big long wall of brick, you don't see the exact same repeat every place. And that worked great on the original Xbox. And then we discovered as you're walking around in the world for the uh, for the One X, like you would walk past a brick building and the frame rate would go <laughs> uh, And it's because there was a procedural noise texture in there that's uh, send, setting up the variation, which is great, except it you pay the cost for that on every pixel. So the cost went up by a factor of four. Oh, wow. And yeah. so we had to, yeah, so we rewrote that, obviously. And um, there's a lot of work that's gone into making sure that the performance is as optimal as it can be. Um, uh, we work with Microsoft, and they get a really cool dynamic system that kind of rejiggers what's going on under the hood uh, as you're playing so that if we hit a bad area for whatever reason, maybe there's a huge number of zombies on screen or uh, somebody threw two smoke grenades and the screen is just <laughs> drowning in, in particle carts, um, we'll basically readjust the performance tuning that we already do in order to keep your frame rate steady. And so I know a lot of people out there were asking about whether there was going to be one of those checkboxes. Some, uh, some Xbox One X games give you a checkbox. And uh, we're not going to do that right now. The checkbox that does what specifically? Oh, yeah. So some games will give you a checkbox that say, basically, optimize this game for appearance or optimize it for performance. And um, we opted not to do that this time out because we wanted to put the effort that would have been involved in implementing the alternatives into making sure that everybody got as close to optimal as we can get. Um, once we get out on the internet, once people are actually playing the game, we're going to have an awful lot more data. And uh, this is something that I'm kind of excited about because we wanted to do this with the original game, but we didn't. Uh, we didn't get a chance to plumb it all the way through. So, you know, within a few days of release, there will be millions of hours of people playing the game, and we'll have telemetry data for the technical stuff on that. And so we'll be able to look at that and see whether or not our, um, our guesses about how people are going to use the game were correct, and then we can course correct accordingly. So once we get that telemetry data in, we'll be in a lot better position to know which kind of settings we would want to tweak in a uh, flip it up, flip it down kind of console, um, and whether it's necessary or not. So uh, that's definitely something we're kind of keeping under advisement for future updates. Um, but I think it'll be, uh, I think a lot of people will find they don't really need it. Um, you know, I started off in PC dev and out there it's, you've got a million variables. You got different kinds of hardware, different versions of the OS, um, you know, faster, slower hard drive, and then the interactions between all those things. And so on my PC games at home, I have 60 million little tweaky sliders that I like to fiddle with. Um, and I love consoles precisely because I don't have to do that. Um, so, you know, an on-off checkbox is not too bad, but it's something that we're going to put off until we have better data to decide which of the... We don't want to expose the... I, I guess there's probably about 200, maybe 150 config variables that go into making those decisions. We don't want to expose all of those to everybody. And so we kind of want to get a chance to run some differentials and see which things are going to give us the best bang for the buck and would make a good call. 60 million switches is a lot of switches, Steve. How do you keep track of all those at the same time? In my giant bulging brain. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is that what that lump is? Because I, <laughs> I was a little worried about it, yeah. but now that I know. So uh, uh, Gooniverse in the chat asks, can we do a giveaway for Steve's shirt? Uh, because <laughs> Actually, I think this, I, we did these for the first game and they might, are they still up on, what was it, not Redbubble or whatever? No, nope. that, <laughs> that, that store is down. That was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe I'll, I'll talk to these guys offline and maybe we'll arrange a raffle or something. <laughs> the very shirt that was sweated I'm, into I'm by I'm pretty Steve sure our, uh, they want to bid on your shirt right now. <laughs> uh, they don't want the consequences. <laughs> Well, I'm glad, I'm glad somebody noticed I made a point of wearing this today because I knew it was going to be online. 
Well, thank you, Steve, for that explanation. And it also kind of, it kind of highlights the value of, of, of having a game where, you know, like our publisher is really committed to letting us support this game over the long term with DLC and free updates and stuff. And it gives you the opportunity to not just have to take stabs in the dark at what people are going to want, but you can actually use real data and give them exactly what it is that they'll benefit the most from. Yeah, absolutely. And that's and that's one of the things that's, that's really cool about where we're going to be over the next year, year and a half, is that, like, we've got a real, uh, a, we got a plan in place to kind of continue putting out new content and also to be able to do the fixes and the updates and to learn from whatever mistakes we've made, because we probably have made a few. No. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Certainly in the hiring process. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I like, I like the, just the assumption that we're talking about Brant when we say that. Uh, so, anyway, thank you, Steve, for uh, for coming in and talking to us about this. Um, and so, yeah, everybody, everybody, give a big thank you to Steve. Thirty seconds from now, when this video reaches you, um, uh, this is an update. <laughs> I did see somebody bid three tree fitty on your tree shirt. Tree fitty on your shirt. <laughs> well, tree fitty what? Is it, well, this is a question. Right. Yeah. Right. So, well, yeah, thanks a lot, Steve. Um, and so we should mention to you guys, um, uh, you, can, you can take off if you want to. Uh, see you, Steve. Yeah, see you later, Steve. Uh, we should mention to you guys that um, Nicole, if you haven't been paying attention to the chat, uh, Nicole is doing giveaways right now in the chat. Uh, not maybe right this second, but like every 15 minutes she's giving away a, uh, a, a, a Clio water bottle. So pay attention to, uh, to Undead Nicole in there because uh, she's going to be uh, giving away a bunch of free stuff. And I know this uh, because, you know, uh, we've had more viewers on these streams than we have uh, been quite quite a while. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of you who probably don't already have every single speck of loot we've ever given out. Uh, and so for those of you uh, in that category, <laughs> we've got... <laughs> Oh, fuck, you ruined oh, it. I was going to use my brain to teleport you guys into the... Oh, you can still do that. Yeah. So uh, I, I accidentally... The miracle of Twitch. I put their name tags up uh, briefly so you kind of know who's coming. Uh, but right here we got Richard Fogey, the design director of the studio, and Leah Rivera, who is a oh. mission designer, content designer on the team. And uh, she and Fogey are together, probably, uh, you know, are, are very responsible for a lot of what we saw in the 22-minute oh. video. Combined. Yeah. Combined, yes. Uh, very responsible for, 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 for the video that you saw because um, Fogey was actually the one playing the game. Uh, uh, a lot of you have been uh, kind of giving Fogey some crap uh, for <laughs> for his uh, uh, State of Decay 2 skills. Uh, and he's, he's giving you the evil eye right there. Um, and Leah was actually responsible for a lot of the mission content that you saw in there. So we're going to, if you guys want to put your headphones on, or you don't have to, whatever. If you want to hear the game or not, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hear it, yeah. So we're going to, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so we're going to stick you guys up at the top of the screen and push play. So this is the video that was released by IGN today. This morning. This morning. Very so. exciting. Uh, so uh, one of the neat things about this is they talked. Um, they talked in the article on f that they released on Friday about uh, what night in the game was like, what nighttime in the game was like, and uh, this is this is a great example of what night in the game is like because pretty much the entire video takes place uh, like right when night really starts, and then it goes. Uh, over the course of the 22 minutes to uh, the sun starting to come up in the distance and kind of see the light starting to creep back in. Um, but it gives you a really good example of what, it, at least in this particular map, uh, what nighttime feels like. And it's a little different in each of the maps. Some of them are um, some of them are lit a little bit differently. Some of them are a little bit brighter. Um, this is, I think, one of the uh, my favorite nights. It's a little, you know, it's dark. You can see you can see silhouettes in the distance of mountains and trees and stuff. But really. You, you have to be paying really close attention. You have to be using your flashlight. Um, and especially like if you go inside, if you go inside into a house or something like that, there's, there's, you know, there's no visibility because the light's not getting into the house, which is really great. Um, talking about some of the um, graphical improvements to the game, one of the things that I like the most uh, is, is how our art team has really sort of refined and played with light. And um, I really appreciate uh, Doug's willingness to kind of go back and forth with me on, you know, the light settings that work for the kind of the gameplay uh, tone that we're trying to hit and uh, kind of balance that against what art's needs are to, to make the game look great all the time. So, Leah, give us some background on this mission that the player's playing through. So when we first started, there was somebody named Lex, who the player had just met. Like, what's going on here? 
So Lexi needs some help, obviously, because she was last away from her home. This is one of the ambient missions, and actually one of the things that I really like about the missions in general for our game is that the simulation adds so much to that mission. So like the, the horde of blood plague zombies in the front, I didn't put that there. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows up, and it just adds this like life and this spark to the missions that is, is really fun. And also with these, these ambient missions, like we like to throw a lot of variations at you too. So this is only one possible ending of this mission. You get home and she ha her enclave is taken over by an infestation, which I did put there. <laughs> <laughs> you did that on purpose! Well, that I did it! You. you ruined her that life! That me! I took all of her friends. Poor <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, so the, the ends of the missions are, are sometimes variable. Sometimes the middle of the missions are variable. Like, it was really fun to structure these things and that, like, they seem really simple on the surface, but then once you get in there, they like branch and twist and turn and fork and have all these different structures that they can play with. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and so here, I did take all of her friends away, yes, but I gave you the <laughs> chance to get her for your family, your community. <laughs> there's, a, there's a silver lining for Lex. <laughs> yeah, in this version. <laughs> in, this, in, this, in this version, the way it plays out. And, and that was really interesting when we, we kind of sat down to talk about the way ambient missions would work. Um, one of the things that we took away from the first game was that um, a lot of the resolutions for those missions was very similar. Um, there wasn't uh, the, the way the, the way the systems work in the first game uh, and uh, the tools that we had access to didn't give us a lot of great opportunities to sort of create variety just inherent in sort of the package. Um, but now, especially when you're when you're playing the game, you didn't really get a chance to talk about it because I was busy talking about nighttime stuff. But um, these ambient missions, they can occur pretty much anywhere. Um, the you know the way the systems work, it picks a, a locate a viable location in the map, and it goes, okay, this this fun grenade is going to go off here, and we're going to create this situation, and then based on a lot of different parameters and cool stuff that that you put in there, it can go any one of these various routes. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, it's, yeah. it starts simple, <laughs> uh, especially when you're working on it. It starts yeah, with, like a simple does. idea. Uh -huh. and then and, goes all over the place and after that. It explodes, and it's most of the bugs you're it probably does. dealing with now. Yeah, it's true, it's true. But I love them. <laughs> and I didn't put in that your car is almost out of gas either, which like stresses me out whenever my oh, car no. is so low. Oh yeah, which, uh, let's see here. We can't actually see that on the screen unless we oh, get rid can't. of you guys, but oh, yeah. yeah. yeah the that. Royale is almost oh, out. Pulsing bar. It was it was fun because I, I was hoping it would run out of gas while I was out, but it didn't. <laughs> like oh this will be great and then we'll have to hoof it back to the base but it, it, for expediency this worked out pretty good we did get a lot of um uh responses on on discord about h how fast the uh the, the the gas gauge goes down like what's what, what's the uh sort of the 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 theory that's going into the you know the the gas gauge mm -hmm. so uh vehicles are one of the most powerful things uh that you can get in the game for for a number on a number of different sort of uh system systemic vectors um you can store things in the trunk so they're incredibly valuable for scavenging. Um, they're a pretty decent weapon against zombies. Yeah. Uh, you want to run some zombies over, they're pretty good at that. And um, th you're also a little bit safer when you're inside them, right, compared to being out in the open. Um, and you move faster. And, and, and when you want to get from point A to point B, and it's got a lot of distance, you have a choice between, you know, running for half an hour <laughs> or longer, or getting in a car and getting there in five minutes. Um, so they're an incredibly powerful tool that you have at your disposal for your community and we really wanted to have it be the case that uh, that there was a cost to that it's a survival game there should be a cost to it in the first game we didn't have um, we didn't have fuel and it was it was something that people obviously and, and justifiably so took advantage of and would just wreck zombies and go through hordes and it was probably like oh my, my number of zombies killed per weapon in the first game is hands down going to go to cars in general. <laughs> yeah, um, I think mine still might be. <laughs> and, right. and to, to raise the difficulty and breakdown, we started taking cars away to the point where the map would be almost empty of cars yeah, there's like because they were just so OP. One car or two car high, highest levels of breakdown. And so we wanted to get uh, we wanted to get fuel as a system in there to increase the value of fuel, which was in the first game but wasn't used for very much. Um, and also to um, to make it a bit of the maintenance for these things. So you have 
to maintain your vehicles uh, very consciously. It's part of the survival um, as well. So the speed that they go down is is balanced very strongly against um, the, the time that we've been playing the game. You are studies that we've done and looking at the utility of the vehicle, the amount of fuel that exists in the world and making sure that we're balancing towards survival. And uh, we've talked about this on previous streams, but exactly what you mentioned earlier, sort of the emergent nature of these systems colliding and creating these situations where, oh, I was just on a mission where I was trying to bring Lex home and we ran out of gas on the way home and then <laughs> and then there was a blood plague hoard or then there was a feral or then there was a juggernaut. That's part of the drama of State of Decay. I know you guys didn't actually set it up that way, but it seems like every time I run out of gas, it's at night <laughs> next door to blood plague. That just happens. <laughs> High, high quality. Game. I get out, I, I yep. sit two desks away from Foggy, and every time that happens, I look over at the sort of the side of his head with <laughs> a little bit of hatred. I feel, I feel the heat. <laughs> the heat. <laughs> So uh, this section we're looking at here, uh, where you know Foggy was kind of giving uh, the folks at IGN a tour of the character system, and I think they've got. Uh, there's going to be a later time where we can get into a lot of depth about the character generation, how it works, and, and just the whole character system. But it's it's been uh, like fun for me to sort of watch which characters got you know what characters got created uh, for this particular game because it is completely different every single time. Uh, you can see each of them has got you know a, a set of skills at the bottom of their list. There, uh, they've got their standing where they can you know let basically level up their status in the community up to the point where they're a hero, at which point you see a, uh, a, a bonus that gets unlocked. This guy is a party planner. He's a cake decorator by <laughs> trade. And so when... In his when, pre-apocalyptic life. Yeah, in his pre-apocalyptic life, he's a cake decorator. And so they put him uh, in charge of par party planning when he becomes a prominent member of the community. And similarly here, you know, she's a, she's a rifle collector. And so she puts together an ammo wish list, which, uh, you know, increases, I think, I think it increases the, um, you know, how much ammo that you get. Uh, and so each of these characters has the potential to have some kind of big impact on your uh, on your community, and, and we'll get in more into that stuff later on as IGN um, releases uh, more information. Yeah, that's kind of a teaser for for additional content that they have access to. So here it looks like you're just you're stopping home at your base yep. and sort of like prepping your character for for the next for whatever comes next. Right, because I have no idea what what Lee is going to throw at me <laughs> in one of these animations. <laughs> so why didn't you bring more bullets? <laughs> 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 Uh, you know, I, I still wanted there to be a little uh, a sense of some drama potentially going on here. Yeah. I think I, you're 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 anticipating a prognostication of of what's going to happen uh, coming up here in a few minutes. Yeah, I feel so bad for Jennifer, man. She just becomes a sacrificial lamb for your little uh, excursion. Spoilers. Oh, oh, oh! Sorry, sorry. So I know, I know. So many of you waited to watch this specifically with us, and, you, and we're avoiding spoilers for the you know. Four hours or so. <laughs> there's, been, there's been like ten minutes of rip Jennifer in the chat, so don't, <laughs> don't, worry, about it. No, don't worry about it. There's pretty spoilers. Our community is spoiling this, this lovely video. Uh, so what I'd been thinking was, I was just going to go out on a scavenging run. I actually was looking to engage with uh, some more ambient missions um, when they turned up. Uh, but they don't, you know, they don't instantly pop up the second you walk out your front door. So I thought I'd go here uh, and and check out uh, check out some food, maybe. But I like all your decisions to like, you know, you bring a gun without a suppressor, you fast search every chance you get. You're like, you're trying to make some zombies happen here. Well, you know, I, I was playing for drama. Like I, I said uh, a little and there's earlier. there's some drama. <laughs> Drama's waiting outside. If, 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 if people watched me play sort of in my normal, non-cheat mode style, uh, they would be bored out of their minds. I'm so <laughs> cautious and so slow. Oh, this, this feral was a nightmare. Oh, yeah, so, and so you hit the gas huh? cloud. A little. I think you clipped the gas cloud a little bit, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there was a bloater right outside. Like, And again, yeah. none, of, none of this is, like, scripted. Nope. It, it just happened that there was a bloater right outside, and then a feral showed up, and the combination of those things uh, led to the demise of... No, get up, Jennifer! Ah, and she no. starts to, and then... then no. she, oh, oh no. the feral... Uh-huh. Johnny T. Farrell shows up and... Oh, yeah, folks really on like, like, aim yeah. and click, click, click. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> that was a great moment. Oh. The, the folks on, uh, on when, we were, when we were talking about this on Discord, they uh, they pointed out that that's a new Farrell kill animation that they've never seen before in the, the previous game. Rip. The throat uh, rip. Yeah, it looked like it, looked like it like, took the top of her head off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we are Lex. We're, we're that same yeah. character we just rescued, which is pretty cool. We got our new hero going. Rest in peace, <laughs> Rest in peace Jen. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jen. 
I so was good. excited when I saw you took the shotgun and then saw the feral though the first time I watched right, it. Right, because I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's going down. The shotguns are usually great against ferals. <laughs> Except I only had like two rounds to try to make that work. And you heard me. I, like, yeah. I had it right yeah. there. Dead to rights. So and you weren't like, reloading after click, each click, shot. Click, click, click. So. But, but one thing is nice is you know, you're actually going out here. To Vengeance. Oh, right. <laughs> Done. Done. There you go. <laughs> Same feral. Mm-hmm. Vengeance for Jennifer. He's and him and yeah. this is Lex, right? Yeah. Right? So just came into the community mm-hmm. and and having a moment of, of going out redemption. <laughs> they they said every, everybody else was a little too attached to Jennifer. They were too sad to go and take care of it, mm-hmm. and Lex stepped up. That's right. So I like how you can see here that you know before you were making a bunch of noise and a bunch of zombies were all swarming you. Uh, and, and you firing your gun was attracting more of them, but it actually is possible if you kill enough zombies you, to reduce the population. Like, yeah. you've got a breather right now. The, the zombies aren't gone for good, but you've got a little breather where you can do something because you killed enough. Exactly. They, they're, they're not, it's not just endless. You can, you can find areas that have so many zombies that, that even that tack that I just took is, is, is not viable. But you'll notice that this time I did take two stacks of ammo. <laughs> Yeah. On the way out, but not the bandages from the body. <laughs> I, I'm I'm equipped for, for a battle here. I'm ready. Going. I'm ready You're to, to take stuff out. Not for yeah. the aftermath. No, no. Lex no. doesn't take any crap, nor does she take any damage. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Leah, there was a question earlier on um, about uh, did you have a, a favorite like mission type that you scripted, or They're is it more of a philosophy? <laughs> I think I had a, a fun position in that I actually got to create like at least one of each of the mission types. So that was really fun for me to just see how they all interacted with each other and then interacted with the game. And uh, every mission I make is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> every mission you make is my favorite. Too. Oh, okay. Just like every piece of art that Doug produces is your favorite. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then there's like the standalone missions versus the arc missions too. So all the ambient missions are really like a little one shot, little nicely contained pieces. And then we have the arc ones, like personal missions, that'll take you through like a beginning, middle, and end of a story. And those are really fun to put together, too. You get to tell a little bit about your survivors. And then we're not talking over much about how the game wraps up, but you yeah. got a couple of those you as well. Got some endings, yep. yeah. Got some endings, got some middles, <laughs> got some enclaves. <laughs> yeah, so good. <laughs> I will say that Leah was one of the most, is one of the most patient designers I've ever worked with oh, because <laughs> I, there was lots of bugs from her that said, you know, I can't, I can't finish this mission that it's my job to do, so could you? And then I'd get caught up in something else, and then I'd... But she was the only one designer I ever felt bad about not delivering stuff to. Um, so, you know. She's, she's got a... You know, she's used to Very patient. Yeah. Thank you, Leah. Patient. I hope You're welcome. <laughs> You know, when you... Mm. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yep, yep. And when, when Richard Fogey wants something from me, I put it on the back burner forever. <laughs> yeah, see, patience gets results. <laughs> Won't fix. Oh, sorry, Fogey. Did yeah. you want that fix? Uh, go over your head. <laughs> Straight to Doug and cry. Oh. So, uh, Damien's asking about uh, uh, the new randomly generated mission types. Like, like what sort of variety of, 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 of ambient missions can we run into? Um, I don't want to go like and reveal kind of the whole kitten caboodle as yeah. my uh, my wife likes to say but you want to talk about a couple of the the ones that you put together sure well there's the one you just saw which is a uh, person is lost away from home and you need to get her to her house her house and where her friends were and multiple endings and then like there was an infestation there right so there's another one that is hunting down infestations so you run into these two people it could be whatever combination of people, guys, girls, but whatever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's all random. <laughs> it's lovely. Everything we do. And and they're like, hey, you want to go hunt some infestations with us? And you can say, sure, let's do it. Or you can say, uh, no, sorry, that's too much. Or you can just drive right yeah. by. Or you can drive right <laughs> by. It's all your choice. They see you later. You know, yeah. out, of, out of the way. It though. is great, though, because they help you deal with some infestations. They do. Right the map. It's yeah. super nice. <laughs> Because those infestations yeah. are going to be there either way, right? Exactly. And so getting right. some help is, is not going to be a bad thing. No, not at all. And then that don't have variety too, of course. Like they can like peace out after one mission or they can just like keep going through several different infestations, you know? 
and giving me rewards. They're not because I love the rewards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Lee, Lee is very generous with the rewards. You know, I'm very stingy. My missions are, are, aren't going to give you crap. So you know, whenever you get nice stuff, you have Leah to thank. That was pro style right there. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I love that backwards dynamite toss. Yeah, uh, I think I think people people in the in the chat have given you crap over the non headshots that you're getting here. <laughs> Look. <laughs> The dynamite was perfect, though. Yeah, <laughs> the dynamite was absolutely perfect. I I'll just say that Lex's shooting stats are kind of low right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to compensate a little bit. It's anyway, kind of new. Um, yeah. You know, one of the other great things about the structure that we have is, you know, there are tons more uh, ambient missions on top of uh, of what Leah has. And again, each one has its own variety built into it. You're not mm -hmm. going to see it quite the same configuration twice, whether it's the location that it pops up or the branches that it that it kind of takes and how people and how folks mm -hmm. interact with it. Um, but it's one of the one of the things that it's really straightforward for us to add more of this stuff to the game after the game is released. And we have, you know, a lot of great plans for supporting the game post-release, uh, both in the form of the um, uh, the DLC Independence Pack and the Daybreak Pack that you were talking about earlier, which, again, range from smaller to, to like, whole new kind of game mode kind of things. Um, but in addition to that, we're going to be, like, just throwing these new things in there. So as you continue to play State of Decay um, and engage with the game, you're going to be like, was that there before? I don't know if I've ever played that mission before. <laughs> or, or, or more branches have gotten added to, a, to an ambient mission type. So the game's just going to keep getting more and uh, more and more content, uh, richer and richer as we continue to go on. I'm very excited to be able to give you those moments. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Count Bust is wondering if all vehicles drain fuel at the same rate, or if it's if it's different fuel efficiency for different vehicles. A different fuel efficiency and different tank sizes for different vehicles. So, um, uh, you know, you can get some sporty little two seaters that are fast as hell, but like their gas tanks are the size of a thimble, and so you, know, <laughs> you really have to think like I'm going to get where I want to quickly. And this car is very nimble and can get around a lot of these wrecks in the world, but I'm going to have to make sure I take some fuel with me and there's not necessarily a lot of room in the trunk either for those or you can take a big old van <laughs> big old slow van that has you know tons of storage super big hard to hard to get around but a little bit more efficient maybe fuel wise for the number of trips you're going to be taking back and forth yeah and, and also I mean your characters can also gain skills we'll get into this more in you know later videos but the, your characters can gain skills that also improve their fuel efficiency if they're if you're a particularly good driver they're talking oh. about Steve again oh is this the um uh, oh yeah, so so is this is this a seed? Seed? You're yep. getting started here. This is so, a siege. So that's another thing <laughs> that, that Leah contributed. Do you want to tell us about sieges and, and kind of how they work? Sure. Yeah. So any population of people will make noise, right? Just naturally. And as you build up your base and you gain in numbers, you start making more and more noise. And noise attracts zombies. So every once in a while, um, we check to see how much noise is going on, and and if it's above a certain threshold, we'll give you a chance for a siege. And so this community apparently was noisy enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably something else I set up. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that it triggered the siege here. And it's just an assault on your base, or you have to defend against zombies for a while. And there are various levels of sieges too. Like if you're not very noisy, like it won't be as bad. And and if you're really noisy, it could get crazy. So <laughs> yeah, this bad. one this one wasn't too bad. Um, and it, and it, this, this you had a lot of help too. Like, I did. A lot of people in your community. And, and, and this community is supposed to kind of be uh, a portrayal of something mid to late game um, in terms of, of overall power. You can see like the guns that I'm using are very high end and pretty nice, fancy weapons uh, compared to what you're going to be uh, have access to at the outset of the game. So yeah, fairly well equipped. Uh, nice number of people too, right? Like this, yeah. if you're if you're a community only in a base this size and you had a community of two. <laughs> It'd be a lot more trouble. I, I that might be it. Might I would like to point out that... Uh, that's true. That's, that's a good point as well. We, would, we probably wouldn't be making anywhere near as much noise. I would like to point out about this base and all of our bases, actually, that if you do provide power to them, they will be lit up somewhat at night as well. Yeah. So... Um, so in this in this case, you had you hadn't uh, built a generator or anything like that that would provide light. I did not. I think the the, the most I did, and I think I did it after uh, after the sequence and just for later, I might have had a, a, um, a facility mod that provided power to one specific mm. facility as opposed to the entirety of the base. So you see that would light up. But... Uh, yeah. Well, and again, I think I put that in, in daytime, but like. It, it is nice when you get kind of later and you have a, a base that's been built properly, not me just freestyling. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're coming back 
to the base from from being out in the nighttime like this, and it's it's kind of this warm glow. A little, yeah. It's your... <laughs> I feel it feel it feels safe. There's some there's some lizard brain stuff going on there where you start to go, oh thank God, yeah. I'm home, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then zombies come and attack it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. yeah. So this particular base um, is the container fort. So this is uh, this was one that was actually uh, 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 James, uh, one of our uh, one of our world artists, came up with this with this idea and just sort of like just kind of built it himself and showed it to us. We were like, holy crap! <laughs> so you really feel like you know secure in a place like this. Um, Except for the waves of zombies <laughs> piling in. Ah! Oh, yeah. But but you know you saw he sometimes. but he was up on the ramparts. He was shooting them before he got in. There were choke points they'd had to pass through. They weren't just coming over you know walls in every direction. Like this, it's it's a different mm -hmm. experience defending this base from defending uh, you know a lot of others. At some point we will have a, a stream I'm sure dedicated to base and to stuff. Base and that'll yeah, be that'll be well. a lot of fun because there was a lot of work put into how bases function this this time. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of time. Uh, put in the, Watch the sunrise. I know, yeah. So this is, this is the hoodie. end of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I said the light, the light's starting to come up in a few minutes from now. It would be, Stop. you know, no, no. yeah, yeah, a little, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little yeah. scary, a little scary <laughs> something off in the distance. Yeah, so that, is that so that that's yeah. a sign of player, right? It's little hearts, <laughs> little hearts. That's right. Oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> that's where you go to get healed up. <laughs> Good uh, luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that so that is the video. Um, so I guess you know, we, we should probably just kind of go into a little bit of a Q and A mode right you now. Can go like Q and A mode. We, we've put, fielded a couple of questions here and there, but our main focus has been just on the video and it's sort of explaining what people are seeing there. So why don't I put the video on in the background and then let's uh, let's pay some more attention to the Something chat. Something more interesting to watch. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so let me get Can that started. Takuro, if you mention yeah. one more time about the backup lights, I'm going to drive to your house today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Somebody keeps mentioning the backup lights are on when we're driving forward. Oh. So one of you guys say bases can be raided by other people and zombies. One of your chief questions you said about other survivors raiding your base. Or is it going to be an actual thing? Uh, I'm not sure. What you just said. Oh, oh they're, they're talking about humans attacking the base. Um, there are situations where humans will attack your base, but it's not like not like that zombie uh, siege that we like, just. Saw. You make too much noise and a bunch of humans show up. Like right. that's not that's not how it works. It's not 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 the same way as the zombies. Um, and actually, yeah, we got um, we got one question about uh, do zombies behave differently at night? That popped up during uh, during the last thing, and I, I think that there's there's no actual like different. You know, their instincts are still the same that they always are. That's kind of the thing about zombies is that you know they basically think the same all the time, but their their number, their population uh, numbers are different at night. Uh, so you're probably going to run into more of them, and so you'll probably mm -hmm. get a little bit more scared of them uh, at night than They're you are in the day. They're harder to see too, so you're going to run into yeah. a lot more of them a lot closer than you were expecting. I mean, that's a very real. thing thing like uh, they, they did this when I was learning to drive in, in high school they were like look at the difference between the distance you can see in the middle of the day and a little you know it's an image of a little kid running across the street with a ball and they show that same image like with your lights off at night and you, or even with your lights on at night and it's right. like you can only see you know about that far in front of you and you have to be a lot more responsive and reactive so like when, when I'm playing in the daytime and I'm playing properly and I have you know uh, you know a, a suppressed weapon I, I pick stuff off in the distance so I never even have to deal with it um, unless it's you know safely holed up in a building that I'm going to scavenge right but at night you can't you can't get that same thing unless you happen to peep their their glowing eyes off in the distance and try to make that work. Which is the creepiest thing when you run across like a blood plague horde and you see just the glowing eyes and your headlights are off and it's just like ah. the, she ran out of gas. The thing I respond to the most at night is the sounds because blood plague makes that that unique sound uh -huh. and it <laughs> creeps me out. It's super creepy. It is. I, I just start running, but then you never know if you're running in the right direction. <laughs> Uh, so there was a question about um, zombie population. Um, can you scroll up just a touch? Yeah, sure. Uh, are population of zombies just randomly generated, or does it take any considering how much you've thinned out an area? Uh, it definitely looks at how you've how you've thinned out an area, the safe zones that you've created in the in the various structures that you um, have uh, been scavenging and clearing out um, are all taken into consideration when we figure out how many zombies are supposed to be in a given area. Uh, yeah, and, and there's and it's definitely the, the short term stuff that we saw there, where it's like after you kill a bunch of zombies in an area, they don't just spawn infinitely in yeah, an area. They'll, it's, they'll it's, calm down for a bit and give right. you. A I, I was still making a lot of noise and and using a, a unsuppressed, very loud weapon, and, and they kind of stopped coming because I cleared that area of what was there. 
So Alfred Ben has asked us a few times, uh, what's the deal with people fighting uh, melee left-handed and shooting right-handed? Um, everybody in State of Decay is ambidextrous. In, in, a post in a post apocalyptic future, you can't just depend on one hand. Because what happens if you lose the use of that hand? You got to be ready to go with the other hand. Oh, yeah, right. no, exactly. And why, why risk your good hand when you can risk your left hand in melee combat? I mean, what happens if a feral just bites it off? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> How would you sign your checks in the apocalypse? Uh,. Kodakins asks, uh, will you be able to play with two or three players, or is it only one or four? <laughs> the range is from one to two, four. four yes. so, <laughs> so you can play with two players, three players, four players. No players, uh, you're not playing, I guess. That's, that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> one? One, one, one to player. four players. Yeah. Uh, I will address very quickly the question that spammed the beginning of this. Uh, stay tuned for... I mean, that's all we can say when people ask about Steam. So stop asking, please. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, we, just, you're just you're just wasting your energy on the keyboard <laughs> if you're asking about Steam. Right? <laughs> but but you know, there there we'll definitely be able to talk more about things like that in the future. But yes. yeah, right now, stay tuned. Uh, NPCs definitely will uh, will head up to your watchtowers and guard those, assuming you have enough. And yeah, assuming you yeah, assuming mm -hmm. you built them. Yeah, assuming you've built them. And uh, and they were, folks were also asking, are NPCs actually like opening those doors themselves to yes. to, to, to mm -hmm. knock zombies? Yes. Oh, yeah. They will also close doors. <laughs> like oh, like behind them when they walk through yes. them. <laughs> or when I'm trying to walk through them. <laughs> it's very considerate them to make sure the base is safe. Uh, yeah. So Kia one two three five asks us, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about leadership roles in communities? I think we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that one for a little bit. There's gonna be uh, I, I think at some point there's gonna be a, a, a bigger discussion about character development in general, and I think that'll be the perfect time to to address that question. But uh, it is it is pretty important uh, to the way the game progresses, and so we're we're excited to get into that when we do, but it won't be yet. Uh, oh, dang. I just saw oh. one that I liked. Hold on. Uh, max number of survivors. Uh, so, we there is a hard limit, but I think it's going to be really hard for folks to actually get up to it without putting themselves in a situation that's very hard to maintain. Of course, the instant the game comes out, some of our hardcore players will be like, it's a piece of cake. That's right. <laughs> uh, 2,000 people in my mouth. Uh, no trouble hitting the cap. Uh, but, but, but it's a big deal. Each time you add a person, there's a cost to it, right? Right. They, like, the, the food cost is significant. Compared, even compared to the first game, the first game kind of had some calculations that it did. and You could have this invisible, you know, mostly invisible, like 30, 40, 50 some odd people that made up your community and most of them were just kind of they weren't real they were they were just kind of taking up resources and we did some calculations and like they would consume some food in this one you can directly see how much food is being consumed every day by a given survivor uh maintaining the entire group of folks like medically um ammo wise the amount, no, of, noise the amount wise. of noise that's getting made at a base uh based on the number of people that are there um it it, it the Maintaining a highly populated community is very difficult. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so we try to treat it like it's a soft cap. Like there is a hard limit on how many people you can have, but the hope is that you'll start feeling that pinch before Way you get earlier, there, and, and yeah. that's not going to feel like it's the real limit. Yeah. Uh, Hair Denser was asking um, about. Uh, customizing characters, and we'll, we'll get into character development again more later. But basically, you know, the idea behind State of Decay is that just like in real life, if you were trying to recruit a group of survivors to to last through the zombie apocalypse, uh, you wouldn't be able to just make up whoever you wanted. Like you'd have to take the people you can get. Uh, and so, it's trying to scavenge uh, around for people to find the right folks uh, is one of the challenges of the game. And so, so you don't get just get to decide who you get, but once you do get them, there's a lot of choices you can make later on down the line about how that person develops, you know, what, what, how, what skills they specialize in, um, you know, how, you know, how, who, who, how they develop socially, like who, who becomes the leader. That ca there's still lots of decisions you make to customize your community, whether or not you can, you know, you can actually sort of like de de decide what their, what their face or their hair looks like. You know, that, that is, 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 is part of them. It's part of who they are. It's part of their identity. And they bring that with them into your community. So. Light does not attract zombies. The flashlight does not attract. The flashlight, clicking it on and off, does that? No. Yeah, and, and and part of the reason for that is it's uh it's 
the flashlight is one of the easiest buttons to fat finger because <laughs> um, it's it's on one of your it's on one of your uh, clicky sticks on your controller and uh, and uh, and during the daytime it's really easy to not notice you turned it on uh, and so we don't necessarily want people just like you know they're sneaking up and then they accidentally attract the entire world of zombies and then by turning their flashlight on so we're, we're letting that stay you know it, it, it's a help to you 100 percent um, and it's not it's not uh, something you have to worry about you know ruining your day. Uh, no swimming in the game. Yeah. Uh, just never, you know, that's a, there's a lot of stuff associated with, with, like, getting swimming to work and getting enemies to work in deep, deep enough bodies of water to swim in, and it just wasn't a, a bridge we wanted to cross in yeah. this game. Yeah, there's so many things that we could accomplish with that time <laughs> that, that, that was going to end up being more important to, to the whole experience than swimming. Yeah. Um, so uh, Brent is asking, you know, does SOD2, does, does it pay homage to things like The Walking Dead and, and other, like, zombie media? Um, you know, I know that the, the original game definitely was full of, of tons of Easter eggs and yeah, references I mean, and things like that. We spent months watching movies and stuff like that, just taking down notes about what was, uh, what would be fun to call out. And McMillan still has, like, notebooks full of his ideas that he ended up putting in the game. Um, and I, I think that spirit sort of continued on into the sequel. Like we kind of we kind of kept doing it, stuff like that. Not, yeah. not not as much explicitly, like not like in your face signage or something like that. But yeah. um, there's there's still nods. Uh, there's actually quite a bit more Easter eggs. Uh, talking, uh, thanking our our biggest fans. Oh yeah, that's that. true. So, um, but I mean, you know, situationally, uh, we we really loved the the tone of. Uh, Walking Dead, so um, you know, that feel is is always something you know. You cannot siphon fuel from vehicles, but that is a great idea. I'll uh, I'll put that in my notes. But that's a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, and and, and I think uh, I remember like. I know at least a couple of the bases, like in the original game, um, some of the bases were named after like, like directors of zombie movies or oh, yeah. creators of Schneider zombie fiction. And, and you had like there's a Savini residence and the Kirkman residence, uh, and there's similar. Like I think if you poke around at the bases, a couple of them in the new game also have references like that to, to, to zombie media. More some of them to more recent zombie media, things that came out since State of Decay One was released. Um, Can we unload guns? No, we cannot unload guns. Nope. Uh, wet, wet when I water asks, can I play Daryl Dixon? Uh, you can play like Daryl Dixon. Uh, we're definitely not putting characters from other people's uh, properties uh, into our game. Uh, sorry about that, but, you know, I would, the I, law. I'm sorry about that, the law. Um, if, if we could do that, The Rock would have been the first person I would have put in the game anyway. And, and put on all the box covers and stuff like that. Can you imagine you just use somebody's likeness however you like, however you want? I mean, games kind of kind of used to do that. Kind of. Kind of. Like somebody was supposed to be somebody, but yeah, it'd just be like The, the Rock. Uh, Night zombie Rock. Zombie Rock. Zom Rock. Night Fox 11 asks, are there children in the game? Will we be murdering child zombies? No, not Never. even a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just decided not to go there. It's Never. easy enough not to. Never, ever. Yeah. So sure. there's the answer to that question. Let's all think about, you know, horrible things for a second and then move on. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think folks are asking if Abraham Lincoln is going to be a playable character, and no, no, I don't think so. Um, no, because he's already in Vampire Hunter. Oh, that's right. He's, he's a vampire guy. Yeah. Uh, Han Solo, uh, Dolo has a, has a rep uh, representation question. He's asking, are there going to be obese zombies? Um, and yes, yes, there absolutely. Are. There are some, <laughs> like, not only do we have the juggernauts, which are the ultimate obese zombies, but yeah, there are, there are all shapes and sizes of zombies in our game. We are very, um, you know, like, yeah, we're not going to body shame these zombies. They can, they can look however they want. We will stomp their heads exactly the same way. <laughs> And Lex just got her revenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're back back to Lex's revenge again. This video flies by. So yeah, it's 22 right? minutes? Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, who, what, where asks, uh, is fuel consumption just affected by vehicle type or how you drive it too? Certainly how often you drive it uh, affects vehicle consumption. I mean, except, uh, affects fuel consumption. 
Um, and a lot of the, the question of how you drive it is actually affected by uh, your character's skills. Like, characters can have certain skills and abilities and stuff like that that, that raise their particular fuel efficiency. And you imagine, you know, they're, they're feathering that gas pedal just perfectly right, using the gears just right, and they're getting better fuel efficiency out of the car. Or maybe they're tinkering with the car <laughs> behind the scenes, <laughs> making it run a little better. Hill. Yeah, roll, yeah, roll, yeah not, you're letting off the accelerator <laughs> going down the hill. That kind of thing. You just imagine that they're doing that, and their, sk their skills will, will, will give you advantages. So there's going to be certain characters where, you know, if you want to go on a really long run, take Bob, because Bob's the one who's going to be able to make it back uh, <laughs> with gas still in the Okay, tank. you say Bob now, but Bob in the next one's going to be a lead foot. Or yeah. when, they, when they try it, and they'll be like, Jeffrey lied to us. <laughs> well, between Lex and Allison, I think I want to make a community just full of people with hoodies now. Hey, Bogey, there was a question. I don't, I don't know if we're ready to answer this uh, about... Uh, adversarial human enemies? What was the question? Uh, it says, are there adversarial human enemies? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, they, they're very dangerous if you're not prepared. Thrill Seeker's asking, uh, do optics on weapons make a difference? Uh, so it, we, we don't have like iron sights or like scoped views where we switch out and go into first person or anything like that. Because um, that entails a lot of, a ton of work on character controllers and things yeah, like that. It, um, but if you see optics on a, on a weapon, it likely means it has access to uh, a zoom level. So you can uh, usually click in on the right stick and get a, a tighter zoom level, which will uh, allow you to be more accurate from a distance. Yeah, and, uh, and to answer you, Hansel Adol, yeah, there are other attachments on weapons other than uh, suppressors. Uh, we'll probably, uh, you know, just in case there's a uh, discussion of that, you know, in, in future IGN videos and stuff, we'll, we'll, we'll save the details on that for later, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's more than just suppressors. You guys know I'll end up talking about that at ad nauseum, <laughs> so don't worry, we'll get there. Uh, yeah, Munchkins, there are some, some dev we have expanded and deepened the base uh, customization system. We'll, 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 that's another question we're going to address more later. Yeah. Uh, so look, so keep, keep an eye, you know, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel or to our Twitch channel or do whatever, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be addressing that in a video sometime very soon. So there's a question here about um, have we considered adding sliders to the game, how much food rations are shared, zombie density, day-night cycle, etc. Um, and that's just not the kind of simulation uh, that we're making, uh, the one in which you have, um, where you basically as a player have to decide how the game is balanced and how, how <laughs> it feels. Um, we, we, we created a specific experience to kind of simulate what it's like in this particular apocalypse, how will you survive? And we wanted it to be the case that that players that are looking for a straightforward action game get in there without having to, to again, sort of design the experience on their own. Uh, I know a lot of folks are down for that level of control over a simulation, but that's not really what we set out to build. Yeah, we, we've kind of bitten off an interesting challenge with the State of Decay uh, franchise, which is, you know, we're, we're trying to make a game that really does please a very wide range of players, which is kind of unusual. Usually you kind of, you try to zero in a target on a specific experience you want everyone to have, and you try to nail that experience as hard as you can. Uh, but with us, we, we, you know, we know that this, this sort of zombie survival fantasy, it's a very broad, um, uh, you know, thing that, that people are interested in from you know people who play all kinds of different games are interested in this question of how you'd survive in the apocalypse. People from you know from very action focused gamers to very strategic focused gamers, and we, we really wanted this game to sort of to, to be to have a broad enough appeal that people who want one of those or the other have things that they can hold on to. So so there are like choices you can make, and we'll get into this more with the base building discussion. There are choices you can make in your base that do change things like how much people are eating and, and, and pay trade-offs and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's not down to the precision of it, a sli like a rationing it, slider. We, we don't pull it up to, to that level of, of abstraction where, you know, it, it feels kind of like a tycoon game almost where you're, yeah. where you're or, or a sim game where you're manipulating the sliders. Although there, there are folks at the studio, oh my gosh. Who would just love that, yeah. Brian, <laughs> Brian would flip out if, that, if that's what we were making. He would go nuts for it. Yeah. Uh, Sauce Boss asks, uh, are you guys hiring? Uh, <laughs> in fact, we are. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we're hiring for a new community manager uh, because uh, N Nicole Hamlet. This was actually going to be uh, this is going to be her uh, this is going to be her last backseat driver stream. Uh, we totally took it over uh, because of the oh, IG right. because the IGN video uh, released today, uh, and so we come kind of took over her slot. But this was going to be her sort of her last uh, goodbye backseat driver stream, and so uh, she's in there. One of the reasons she's like so eager to give you guys. 
Kids uh, water bottles uh, in the chat right now is because she she's going to miss you guys. She's she's going to be Friday is her last day as our community manager, and she has been so amazing for years. Uh, you know, uh, talking to you guys, keeping you guys uh, abreast of what we're doing, uh, and sort of you know st st standing in sort of uh, in that role where you know a lot of times we're really focused on building the game and we don't have a lot of time uh, you know to focus on on answering your questions and stuff. But she's been in there with you guys the whole time. And she's been so amazing, and I hope you guys show her sufficient appreciation for all that she's done uh, for this community, because she, she has been incredible. Defiant yeah. Ketchup, please don't riot without Nicole. <laughs> please don't. Yeah. Now we don't have anybody to deal with the riots. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so we are we are going to be hiring for a new community manager, and so uh, we we, we uh, hope we'll we'll get that slot filled soon because we know that you guys are terrifying uh, without you know. Whoa. So, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's right. There are some terrifying monsters yeah. in there. Well, mostly looking at, at a blade of meat shield who's in there yeah. going, No, Nicole, no peace! No, no Nicole, no peace! <laughs> fire! Set fire! <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So fo folks are thanking uh, Nicole in the chat, which which well, uh, is only appropriate. We can't thank Nicole enough. Um, and there was a Zoom mode. Sorry. Oh, there was, yeah. Ah! Right there. <laughs> And uh, so, folks, are asking, you know, Nicole is actually she's taking a full time writing gig um, on uh, on a game, which is really exciting because she, you know, she's been, uh, you know, she's not just a community manager; she is also a writer. She's uh, a published author. She, she is a she is a successful writer, and now she gets to do more of this other thing that she loves um, full time, which is going to be awesome. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing what she produces uh, over where she's headed. So, it was only a matter of time until her success would take her away from us. <laughs> See, I could be a writer too. <laughs> That's all it takes. I do have an English degree in writing. I never <laughs> use it, though. And obviously, I can't speak the language very well. <laughs> uh, Captain Assassin is asking if she's going to get a commemorative tricycle um, from you as a, as, a, as a going away gift. Uh, I'd love to give away the Tricycle Gibraltar uh, Award to Nicole, but she's already in, uh, memorialized. Um, in, Immortalized. Immortalized. In the yes. game. Not memorialized. Not memorialized. Wow. Immortalized. In the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they're both kind of dark. You guys will have to find her, <laughs> but she's there. Uh, Dan thirty one is is endorsing that uh, Nicole is an amazing author. So uh, yeah, appreciate that. There was another question, real quick, about um, surveying in the game, which is something that I don't think it's been shown yet, and I'm not sure if they're planning on if there's going to be a video on that. If we should hold off, or uh, we might as well wait until they till they get through. I'm pretty sure we went through surveying, not maybe to the level of detail that we do with the um, upcoming uh, uh, sort of community screen and and, and, and survivor uh, details or the the base management stuff. I think it's in there, so... Yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll probably chat about that later, but it's, you know, it's still a mechanic in the game. We'll just say, <laughs> we'll say that much and, uh, and leave it at that. So, um, you know, let's, uh, honestly, yeah, let's, let's, let's leave it there with that uh, fitting tribute to Nicole. So many questions. I'm sorry we weren't able to get to all of them. Uh, we're going to keep doing this, though. Like, we'll every, time, every time IGN puts something out, we're going to come here. If you've got a question that we missed, please come back, ask it again. We're going to try to get to as many as we can, so... Um, There's a few of a few of you we will ignore on purpose. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, mostly a blade of me. You guys know who you are anyway, so <laughs> ask away. <laughs> so I just, yeah, so just want to thank you know Richard Fogey for coming in here, Leah Rivera for coming and joining us, and also uh, for for creating a lot of the content that we saw here in here today, and uh, and of course yeah, that's uh, me and Brant, and uh, we'll say goodbye to you guys. Um, and one other thing, uh, at some point when we put this video on YouTube. Uh, uh, Wonder is going to add a subscribe link around here somewhere and a link to another video. So if you want to like or subscribe or whatever, if you're here on Twitch with us, you can't do any of these things. But if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe uh, because we're going to keep making these videos. We're going to keep giving you more information about the game. We want we want this to get to everybody who's interested. So That's right. please go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, and we are going to sign out. See you later, Thank everybody. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. <laughs>